one of the most popular places in Ireland's capital city of Dublin is Temple Bar. Known for traditional music, lively nightlife, many pubs, enticing restaurants and artistic vibe, Temple Bar is a must-visit destination for locals and tourists alike. In fair weather, you will see thousands of people out on the streets, standing or sitting on the pavement with a pint in hand, having a grand time. The sidewalks are mobbed and the pubs are packed. Sure, it can get a little <laughs> rowdy and noisy with all that Guinness flowing, but don't worry, this area is very safe night and day with people out just to have a good time. It is one big street party. Stick around because at the end of the program we have a bagpipe concert in the streets. After we present the many great scenes of Temple Bar. There's no doubt this is a place with a lively atmosphere created by lots of people day and night, giving it a unique energetic character. If you're looking for a tranquil evening in a quiet neighborhood, there are many other parts of Dublin that will make you happy. But if you're out for some fun, come on over to Temple Bar. And it's also a good place to have dinner where you'll find a more peaceful atmosphere inside the restaurants. There are usually a few locals around, but granted, this is a touristic place, and there are many good reasons why visitors flock here. So don't come to Dublin and avoid it because you think it's a tourist trap. This is a fun, authentic place with much to offer. There is kind of a temple bar for locals, and that's across the street over on Dame Lane, where you'll find the Dubliners out enjoying themselves in their pubs, outdoors having a drink and a chat, but hardly any tourists. This is only a block away from Temple Bar, a place where you might strike up a conversation with the locals. We'll see more of this place later in the program. While Temple Bar is famous for its nightlife, the area also has a daytime charm when it takes on a different character with the restaurants and shops and many of the pubs still offering live music. And yes, you can dance. That thriving music scene is one of the best features of Temple Bar, creating a lively and energetic atmosphere. Traditional Irish music with its soul-stirring melodies and foot-tapping rhythms can be heard echoing through the streets. Many of the neighborhood's pubs and bars host live music sessions inviting talented musicians to showcase their skills. It's usually a fiddle and guitar with some singing, but these music sessions often involve a variety of traditional instruments like the bodron, the Irish drum, tin whistle, and accordion, creating an unforgettable ambience that captivates locals and tourists alike. You will also hear music from many street performers, so stop a while and listen and be generous with your tip if you like what you hear. These streets serve as an open stage for musicians ranging from solo performers to small bands of various qualities to express their art and connect with passersby. Street music can serve as a platform for aspiring musicians to gain exposure and support themselves, perhaps using it as a launching pad for their careers while refining their skills and building a fan base. Music continues late into the night, enhancing the city's renowned nightlife and contributing to the energetic ambiance and vibrant atmosphere of Dublin streets. We'll hear a lot more music in the streets and in the pubs towards the end of the program. Perhaps the most famous and most photographed music pub is the Temple Bar Pub itself a true institution in the neighborhood. With its cozy interiors adorned with vintage photographs and memorabilia, if you're a fan of Irish music and a good pint of Guinness, you're in for a treat. The 
Temple Bar Pub is one of Dublin's most iconic and well-known establishments. Perhaps the most famous pub in Ireland. It has become synonymous with the name Temple Bar and is often used as a symbol for the entire area. Inside, the pub exudes a cozy and traditional atmosphere with an interior characterized by low ceilings, dark wood furnishings, and an abundance of memorabilia giving it an old world charm. The pub's in a historic building with a distinctive red exterior adorned with hanging flower baskets and it's quite large on the inside with many rooms. It's a great place to experience the warm hospitality for which the Irish pub culture is famous. The vibrant atmosphere, bustling crowds and live music make it a favorite spot for tourists and locals. However, due to its popularity, the pub can get quite crowded, especially during peak hours and weekends. Its prominent location and fame make it a must-visit destination. This neighborhood is also a treasure trove for food lovers. From traditional Irish fare to international cuisine, you'll find an array of dining options to suit every palate. They've got lots of pasta, there's Asian food, anything you want. Whether you're in the mood for hearty pub grub, gourmet burgers, seafood, or vegetarian delights, Temple Bar has something for everyone. The many restaurants and cafes cater to all preferences. Maybe a hearty Irish breakfast, a bowl of Irish stew, or a fusion of global cuisines. If you are on a budget or don't have much time to sit down at a restaurant and order something off the menu, there are some affordable places with quick service to eat and drink in the area. One favorite fast food is the pasty, an easy to eat, handheld, affordable meal in a crust and quite delicious. Served quickly with a variety of fillings to choose from. If you're interested in shopping, Temple Bar offers a mix of independent boutiques, vintage stores, and craft shops. You can find unique clothing, jewelry, artworks, and souvenirs to take home. Located in central Dublin, between the River Liffey and Dame Street, just one block south is that local hangout mentioned earlier, Dame Lane, that we'll get back to soon. The main parts of town are in easy walking distance. For example, St. Stephen's Green is just 500 meters away. The other major destinations are all in easy walking distance. Central Dublin is a compact area filled with great sights to see. If you're in the north side of downtown, say along busy O'Connell Street, just walk south to the river and you can go across the pedestrian Hapenny Bridge. Another scenic landmark you'll enjoy. That'll lead you right into Temple Bar. Through Merchant's Arch, an old brick building and alleyway constructed in the 1820s. Now it's a bar and restaurant. This will lead you directly into Temple Bar Square, the very center of this colorful neighborhood. This lively plaza has a very pleasant terrace in the center with open-air restaurant tables and it's surrounded by other pubs, bars, and eateries. Some of them have a representative out front inviting you to come in. What's the restaurant? What's the name? The Old Mew Restaurant. It's an Irish restaurant. For me, it's the best tool that I ever tried. Uh -huh. and it's a cozy place, it's small, and try some traditional food. <laughs> Irish food. Irish food, yes. And beer. Ah, uh, and also beers, uh, traditional beers, and uh, affordable and, and really, really tasty. Across the street, another pub for dining. What's the restaurant? It's the Old Dubliner. Uh huh. And what kind of food? Irish food mainly. They have a mix of hot and cold traditional Irish dishes along with some contemporary choices. Or you could even have breakfast here. Gallagher's Box Tea House specializes in box tea. That's a traditional Irish potato pancake made from a mixture of grated raw potatoes, mashed cooked potatoes, flour, buttermilk, and eggs. Then we've got Bad Bob's, food freshly prepared in-house from locally sourced suppliers. 
Then there's the Clarence Hotel. It was opened and operated by U2's Bono and The Edge. They still own the building, but others now manage it. One of the wild Irish traditions is the party for a bride-to-be with her girlfriends, carrying on in the streets, acting a bit silly, and doing a little drinking. Temple Bar is a curious name because there is no temple here, and there is much more than one bar. In fact, it's loaded with many pubs, the defining characteristic of the neighborhood. The name is derived from Sir William Temple, a renowned English diplomat and writer who lived here in the 17th century. The deep history goes way back to the Vikings and even much earlier. In the 18th century, Temple Bar became a thriving commercial district with warehouses, taverns, homes, and brothels. It was also a center of Dublin's political and cultural life. In the 19th century, Temple Bar began to decline as the city's commercial center moved to the north side of the River Liffey. By the 20th century, the area was in a state of urban decay with many derelict buildings. In the 1980s, a regeneration project was launched to revitalize the area. By 1990, locals began to gather here for drink and conversation. I happened to be here in 1992 and was able to walk around and take some video of the people out in the streets and it's quite a bit different. Keep in mind this is the same main street that we've been looking at throughout the program. Now it has all of those wonderful restaurants and shops and pubs, but in 1992 people were just sitting on the sidewalk drinking and talking. Even though it's a big tourist hotspot today, it looks like 30 years ago there were no tourists. When you have a look at these people sprawled out on the sidewalk and standing up on the corner talking and drinking, and these people are all about in their 20s. It's a college crowd and no tourists and no old people, just young people out there having fun. Back to modern day Dublin, we're going to have a look at other places nearby. Temple Lane South is a quieter street in the neighborhood. It still has a few restaurants and some bars and beautiful cobblestone paving. And it leads down to Dame Street on the south edge of Temple Bar. You can see this is a major thoroughfare, much different than those narrow pedestrian lanes of Temple Bar. It goes for about 600 meters running east and west, connecting Trinity College with Christchurch. One block south, there is a similar neighborhood with cobblestone streets and the pubs and the outdoor drinking, but this place is kind of like a temple bar for locals. You will only see a few tourists here on Dame Court and Dame Lane. It's mostly young locals out enjoying a conversation and having a drink. They call it the crack, an Irish art of convivial socializing. For a little insight to how these locals feel about Temple Bar, watch her reaction when I mention what about Temple Bar over there? Go to Temple Bar and you'll get Well, yeah, but this is nicer, more local. Here you're not going to find performances of loud Irish music, but if you're looking for a place to have some conversation with Dubliners, come on over to Dame Court and Dame Lane, have a drink and see what happens. Then wander about and explore the area. Dublin has nearly 800 pubs to discover, more per capita than any other city in the world. After visiting Dame Lane, you could take a nice stroll further into the little side streets of Dublin, along Wicklow, then turn down Grafton or up to Trinity College. We'll save that for another video because we're heading back up to Dame Street, have a look around, and then return into Temple Bar for more Irish music. Dame Street is a big, busy road with many restaurants, such as Millstone. Fine dining in an elegant setting at a reasonable price. For example, lunch is currently about 12 euro and you've got your choice of steak sandwich or beef burger, grilled salmon, vegan tofu salad, or buffalo wings. 
More eateries await you on the street like Bobo's, and there's some Italian restaurants. The street changes name as it goes along to College Green, approaching Trinity College. Down Parliament Street, you'll have a view of Dublin City Hall in the 18th century Georgian style of architecture, which leads us back into Temple Bar. Strolling once again along that main lane. Oh yes, there are more restaurants and we've got music in the streets. We'll have a lot more of the traditional Irish music coming right up for you in a pub. Most of the action is centered on the main street that changes name three times, starting as Fleet Street, then Temple Bar, and finally Essex Street. It's only about 400 meters from the Millennium Bridge down to the O'Connell Bridge, which are the effective boundaries of Temple Bar. It's a small area, but packed with people. We'll have some more street music coming up in a moment and take you inside another pub. Then we'll finish up with the Bagpipe Band. I'm going to take you inside the Keys restaurant with a famous pub on the ground floor and upstairs several dining rooms serving excellent cuisine while we listen to some more street music from my favorite group. During an earlier visit, we came upon a most unusual music session in a parking lot. A group of bagpipers practicing and performing for a local street crowd. Pipe bands often participate in parades and festivals and accompany traditional dances and songs, but here they are in a parking lot where the audience could get very close to the loud music. Seriously, they are playing Scottish bagpipes, which are different than traditional Irish pipes. In this Scottish version, the air is blown into a tube connected to the bag, which is then squeezed into the pipes to make the music. While Irish bagpipers do not blow the air into the bag, but instead pump it in with arm motion and a bellows. Bagpipes have been also used in various forms throughout history in different parts of the world including being used in warfare, where they would rally the troops and scare off enemies with their somewhat menacing sound. That distinctive music is often described as being loud, mournful, and powerful. We frequently upload new movies, so please subscribe to our channel.
and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up? And we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.